Hello everyone and welcome to the 10th episode of Career Podcast. Today we have an illustrator from Poland, Joanna. And uh, Joanna, could you please introduce yourself, give a little introduction on how you got into visual arts and design and also about your journey. Hi, thank you very much for having me. Um, Actually, my journey started in a bit funny way because I really had no idea what I want to do. So after high school, I just took a year off and then I really wanted to study, but I didn't know what. So I just went to the university and I said to the administration lady, hey, I want to study, but I don't know what. And she just asked me, what do I like to do? And I told her I really love to paint, but I'm really not good at the drawing and I'm not good in art. I also love um, to do something on the computers, like programming, but again, I'm not good in math, so I can't go into programming. And she just said, okay, Joanna, I will sign you up. You'll be a graphic designer. And at that time, I was not even mature enough to like say no to it. So that's how my journey started from a random administration lady who just said, uh, who was able to see where I fit uh, at the university. So I was studying in Cyprus and uh, it was graphic design and advertising. And it was really exciting journey because indeed I was not good enough. I didn't know how to draw. Um, I didn't speak very well English, but still I loved it so much. I managed to like graduate with straight A. So I knew this is, this is what I have to do. And yeah. And right after I graduated, actually, I got into the finance industry which was not a dream designer's job, but it taught me a lot about the business side of it. So I had a chance to learn a bit from a different perspective, uh, what is important to actually sell, to communicate with the audience. But on the end, after a couple of years, I knew that this is not necessarily like um, following my passion. So I decided to uh, try in educational industry and it was like almost there. I really loved it. But finally, when I had my kids, I decided, okay, I need to try my own business so that I can really do something that I love. And that's when I started to learn illustration and basically start working on my own business. So that's pretty much it in a short. All right. To off to the next question, were you originally started studying art and design or you were pursuing another career path? I mean, uh, you already said that uh, a, ca- a counselor like saw that in you that you should go to graphic design and like yeah. we understood that part. But um, initially, was uh, was that your first choice as a career path or that was something else then you pivoted to graphic design? Actually, first I wanted to study art, but because I did not have a portfolio and Um, To be honest, when I was in Poland, it was not really like a common uh, choice of studies. And even if you wanted to go, you would really have to be very artistic and already know how to draw and have a good portfolio. Maybe go come from the high school that already has this background. And I didn't have it. There was no one who could like guide me to apply. Um, I could not afford the studies because if you wanted to go to private university, it was really expensive. So I was like, okay, I'm not going to do this. I wanted also to study law, but obviously, again, something I couldn't really get into. Hence, that's why I took a year off where I decided that I'm just going to earn some money and then I'm going to be able to study what I really love. And yeah, and then when I stayed in Cyprus, I really loved the culture and different people. So I decided to stay there and that's where I started my university. Hope that makes sense. And just out of curiosity, was that, were you studying in the Turkish part of the Cyprus or the Greek part? On the Greek side, yes. But I visited both sides. I loved both, actually. So we had also students from the Turkish side. So it was a mixed culture. Interesting. Cool. And the next question, what is your main branch of design that you're focusing on right now? What area of visual arts right now you're working on? And tell us about your experience from the start until now. Um, So as I said, when I graduated, I uh, got into the finance industry. Um, So I worked at the bank and it was a great experience to not only learn how to apply design to big brands, but most importantly, it uh, taught me how to 
think about business side b- b- below it. So I really wanted to convince them always to like do some illustration, but then they would say, okay, can you give us the numbers? And I couldn't. And it really um, motivated me to study the business side. So I uh, learned from my peers there, like, how can we, w- what can I do with my work to, you know, connect better with the audience? Um, it's not only about sales, but also what people actually want to see. And thanks to this experience, I uh, kept on going with a uh, branding strategy. So this was the first focus I had uh, when I opened my studio in, I think, 2016, Uh, I was in Prague back back then and I started off with logo design, identity and the whole uh, branding strategy behind it. Um, Again, it was not really like my dream job. So uh, a bit later on, I added to it uh, illustration work. But I have to admit that just currently the past two years, I was able to do my like dream job, which is a combination of both. I run branding strategy workshops, and then we work on the identity design and uh, illustration system. So I'm not an expert in logo design, but I have another designers that work with me. And um, my main focus is uh, in business strategy, like, you know, building the brand and then doing the illustration. All right. And uh, how does your design process usually go anytime you want to start working on a design project? Um, It depends a lot on the type of uh, client scope, of course, and the type of the project itself. Um, But um, it usually starts from the strategy session. So let's assume that I would get a full branding project, then uh, we would have almost a full day workshop (laughs) and at least half a day where we would uh, define your positioning, uh, vision, um, all your company values and where you want to take your business so that we can also uh, write a marketing action plan. And this is like the backbone for every project for me because I would like to know if the client really needs a logo, do we really need illustration system? So um, this beginning of the process is uh, really useful to understand uh, also the business side of my client and whether it's worth investing in all the assets or should we just focus on some parts. And uh, also we want to bridge the gap between what my clients kind of want uh, to launch as a business or uh, as a product or service and uh, the gap of what their audience actually want. And uh, once we do that, uh, we are kind of testing the strategy. So we talk with the uh, at least two, three people who are a possible audience to see, is this something that uh, they would respond well to? Uh, if we don't get an interview, then we at least try to send some questionnaires. So anything that can give us a feedback on that strategy, if it's actually working and connecting to people. And um, once we have the strategy in place, I would design the stylescapes, which are basically just the mood boards, with uh, which, which visualize visualize the you know this whole strategy, and I always make sure that the client is involved in a way uh, that it feels like they are designing it with me to make sure that um, we don't have so many revisions and that we are aligned on the each step as we go. So I hope it makes sense until now. And yeah, sure it does. Um, yeah. Yeah, understood. And, and uh, then we go with all the visuals. So there will be a logo design and illustration systems. So we would, and again, at each step, we try to prototype the idea first and test it on the audience. And if it's okay, then we apply the design. And perhaps the illustration system is the most fun part where we actually add some feelings and more personality to the brand. Oh, interesting. A bit complex, uh, but let's say this is a big project where we have uh, full branding. uh, So, by the way, you mentioned that you first tested out on the audience. Uh, How does that usually go? You mean testing? Yes. So, again, it depends on the scope and the budget. So... It's it's very important process for me because I 
I cannot guarantee a result until I at least uh, test it with a couple of people. So let's say the smallest way of testing would be to, bring, to build some mockups. Um, we could show the style skips to the clients and to reach out to the clients is like either my, uh, my client who came to me uh, provides the people for the review. And if we, we don't have the audience, then I might just build a questionnaire or maybe um, I would build a, like a landing page. And then we could uh, ask in the Facebook groups or uh, on bigger budget, then we could also outsource this process to a company who actually specializes in that. So again, it depends on the scope and the budget and how much risk we take also. So for small things, it might be enough just to launch the brand, you know, and go for it and like, you know, uh, adjust it based on the feedback on the spot. But let's say if we are working on a product that gets a bit more complex and then I'm trying to actually really test it before we print it, before we send it to the manufacturer. So yeah, that's it. Okay. And uh, what now the design process, we already discussed it. Now the thing I think um, it's really interesting to know your opinion on is what do you think about the statement? you need to be good at drawing to be a good designer or an illustrator. Oh, I, I'm not good at drawing. <laughs> so definitely not. And it depends. What do you do? Of course, if you want to become an uh, illustrator and like focus on the drawing, you know, every day for your clients to a certain degree. Yes, you need to. You mean, Do you mean like realistic drawing? No, not realistic drawing, but like the concepts of drawing, like you need to be super good at like composition, lighting, fundamentals, um, perspective, stuff like that. Because uh, the main pillars of like basically visual drawing, that's what I'm saying. Because a lot of graphic designers usually, um, they uh, or illustrators, they're not, they even they admit themselves that they're not good at drawing. But sometimes they make and create like fantastic like artworks and illustrations for companies. Uh, you know, the whole dynamic of this. I think it's not necessary to know how to draw like realistic scenes or anything, but depending on your position, like when I was an art director, it was important for me to sketch a lot. And I don't know how to draw until today. I really need to spend a lot of time to get the proportions right. So as an overall, no, you don't need to know how to, and this should definitely not discourage you from uh, learning something new. Uh, but if you don't know how to draw, it's okay. But, you know, let's say if you are an art director, you still need to sketch. So it's fine if you don't know how, but, you know, you need to find your way to do it fast just to show the concept. Um, if you want to be an illustrator, again, you don't need to know realistic drawings because you could uh, draw literally in the illustrator by using basic uh, shapes, right? So I think if you overall have a good taste, let's say, you can put together a composition and know the hierarchy and you know the basics of design in general then you can figure it out you don't need to know how to draw realistically okay and uh, we already like just just by a simple look at your uh, instagram bio i've seen uh, drawing women florals and felix and i want to talk about that uh, what is your main subject of your so what is uh, your main subject of your artworks and what made them interesting to you? And I've already, it's already highlighted in your in Instagram bio, but I would like you to go in depth and explain about your subjects. If it's personal project, then uh, I really love to draw actually women. Like you mentioned, I'm really inspired by the folk style. Um, I love the patterns and a lot of details. I love the textures and uh, I would prefer a spot illustration where I have just one or two characters with not complex background for the reason that then I can really focus on the very, very detailed uh, pieces of the clothing or the hair. So I prefer illustrations also that I can do within a day or two. Um, I really care about the topics of like personal growth, uh, mental health, because I love to show the feeling itself in the illustrations. And usually they come out quite whimsical, charming. It's it People call it childish, but I think it's, uh, um, I just found it the best way to connect with the audience. 
uh, and it's kind of it became my style. So uh, it's quite simple work as well. I use like a lot of icons. Yeah, that's pretty much it. All right. Um, who are your favorite artists and designers that have inspired you the most? Oh, there are so many. <laughs> um, when I started out, definitely Meg Lewis and Andy J. Pizza, because they are both illustrators who use very simplistic drawings. And that helped me to understand that indeed I don't need to draw realistically. And, you know, that complex drawing doesn't mean that it's better. You just kind of need to find the styles. So they really helped me to like get it out. Um, I also love uh, Jessica Walsh and Timothy Godman because they are both um, kind of working for social cause and they have a great campaign. So I love them the most for the like the themes and the subjects they are talking about. Um, yeah, I think that's like the key people when it comes to illustration, when it comes to business, then for sure, I love to watch uh, the future and Chris Doe because they are really good about the business and mindset stuff. So it depends what you are looking for. All right. And just a quick note, ladies and gentlemen, there, how I actually managed to find out about the uh, Joanna's works was uh, from a live stream from uh, Future's uh, Future Academy YouTube channel. So, yeah, uh, that's I mean, if you're in the world of design and you're trying to research, you probably know the channel and Christo. But if you don't, definitely check it out. It's Future without an E and the end. So yeah, there's that. Yeah. And um, all right, the next question. Uh, you know, when usually people ask someone who's an artist or a visual visual artist, uh, that's what I'm trying to say, is that when they ask them how to start drawing, they usually say, just do it. And that's not a wrong answer actually, you know, but ha like the question right now is how to simplify the start of the learning process, you know, you know exactly the dynamic of it. Um, that depends. Like, why do you want to simplify it? You mean just to learn it faster or because it's harder for you for some reason. So I guess it depends like what's the you know uh, what's the reason why you want to simplify learning but perhaps for as a general answer i would say um definitely to specialize in something and to focus on one thing at the time because i think when people start out and i did the same uh i wouldn't say mistake but i i learned the same way that um i would check 100 different brushes um i would draw completely different topics every day. And I think this made it difficult for me to learn. So perhaps if you are just starting out and you want to um, simplify your learning process, you just need to specialize and kind of focus on one thing. So pick one, uh, one medium, whether it's a paint or procreate or anything, one medium, one color palette, one theme, and you kind of draw it until you master it and uh, you should do it every day. So it's not about just starting something, but, but being consistent and persistent in doing it. Because if you just do, you know, if you draw on the weekends, perhaps it's going to take you way, way longer and you're not going to see the results. And the same when you, it comes to picking what you're going to draw. If you, on the beginning, draw the same character every day for three, four days, after four days, you're really going to be like master of it. So I think that's the most important step. Well said. And um, yeah, that's basically what I was going to aim for with the question. The main question, the, the basically the goal behind the question was um when when like an artist would say just go draw as much as you can or every day they are kind of clueless like what to draw and like you know which how to draw but you know as you said exactly perfectly is that a pick one medium whether it be digital whether it be pen and pencil charcoal anything and just start i don't know drawing faces characters bodies uh, shapes objects just have a consistent pattern that's the key thing and uh yeah there's a lot of tutorials on youtube you can start with one video then go to the next and you'll be 
you will gain some momentum to continue. And that's the whole point. Yes. And you can switch, like if you're bored, you know, the topic, then you can pick another one. But, you know, like one thing at the time, limited tools, limited topics. And ideally, if you can find a project to get paid for it, that's even better because then, you know, when you paid, you are motivated, you can spend more time and effort on it. So that could be another way. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. And uh, this, uh, the next question is, you feel free to, if, you, if you're not comfortable, don't answer it if you want, but what are you working on right now that you can tell us about? What project is it like? Is it an illustration? Is it the graphic design? And I say, feel free to not answer it because, you know, because of uh, the NDAs, you have to sometimes sign for projects. You can't disclose the details of a project, you know? That's why I said, if you want, we can skip the question, but... Mm. Uh, that's fine. I will try to answer as much as I, I, I always work on many things at the same time. Um, so one thing is um, the client work. And I have a wonderful project that actually is a 10 month project, which is an amazing uh, opportunity to work on a brand for so long because I will be helping to uh, mentor the business. So we're going to have a coaching call every month. Um, it's also in the mental health industry which is wonderful because it's really like suiting my expertise. And um, I just want to say, like, don't be afraid to specialize what I told you earlier, because it is possible, even if your specialization is very narrow. So for me, it was branding with illustration and like mental health. And many people told me, like, it's too much. Like, you're not going to find clients in this small niche. But it's not true. I found, and not only I found, they found me. <laughs> so um, I have one wonderful project where I'm going to work on everything from uh, branding strategy and business strategy to branding, uh, product design, illustration systems. And uh, we also going to have coaching calls every month so that we make sure that the business, like, you know, we can test it. So this is like a client work that I'm currently working on. And, um, what else? Perhaps one more thing is that I have a personal project to draw a book. I'm drawing a book and I have a writer who's helping me with that. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Perhaps the personal projects, there are hundreds, (laughs) but, um, that would be boring. Maybe also worth mentioning is the ongoing, you know, connection of the audience I have on social media, which is, uh, just drawing for them. And that's probably the most fun part. All right. And next question. Uh, what area beside what you're working on right now, you're interested to explore and learn in the future? Like imagine if you had um, enough time and resources to be able to invest your time and energy into something, some other skill or an area of design you like. like for example, right now you're an illustrator, but Maybe you are interested in animation, you are interested in game design, anything. Like what area besides what you're working on right now would you um, invest in in the future? Um, of course, many things again. I'm a really busy person. <laughs> I, uh, I would like to illustrate my own book. That's something I never have time for because uh, like, you know, children books design, they are not um, still that good projects, if I can say that. So I would like to illustrate my own book. And that's something, that's a bigger project that I need time for. And like, you know, you need to work on the full layout. And um, I would love to also learn, uh, I would like to open a coffee shop, you know, something, a creative space uh, where we can have breakfast and actually uh, host those creative workshops in the local community. So something a bit smaller, more like home feel. So it's a new area for me to learn how to run a cafe and maybe even how to cook because I would like to serve uh, breakfast for the creatives who join me. Um, but yeah, due to COVID, that's not going to be very soon. <laughs> and the, fine, the third thing that I'm kind of looking forward to is teaching. Again, maybe in the smaller community and more like mentoring and teaching and helping people like um, overcome their limiting beliefs and, you know, get paid for doing an art, you know, not just, so how to turn the artwork into commercial world. So those are the like future projects that I have, uh, coming on the horizon. I'm going to be honest. Um, 
I've like during all the episodes of podcasts I did, I ask this question every time, you know, because it's a really major interesting question when to ask every artist, you know, but this one is actually was my favorite answer. The cafe and hosting like <laughs> workshops in the cafe. <laughs> like that sounds lovely. I'm, I'm going to be honest. And, uh, I wish you, I wish you the best of yeah, luck. Thank in that. You. And, uh, that's it. We're at the last question. Uh, so with all that being said and done, to conclude all we discussed, give us a roadmap for someone who is zero in visual arts and wants to get to the place you are in terms of skill set, like where to start, best tools and softwares, preferred books, courses, anything. And I know this, uh, it's, this question is kind of an extension to something we discussed earlier, but this time you can go in details as much as you want. Um, all right. Um, perhaps the most important, what I try to mention all the time is, uh, the part of finding something that you really love doing. So it's something between finding your passion and finding your expertise. And the sooner you can find it, the better for you, because, um, it took me maybe seven years to find, um, to be where I really want to be with the, with the job. So if you can do it faster, it's better for you. Because if I could use the seven years to, you know, master my expertise, perhaps I will be running the coffee shop already. But, um, so one side is like, be aware it takes time, but also like try to figure it out as soon as you can. And you can do that by doing like, um, Ikigai exercise or, um, just trying to find, what's the gap between what you have, you are passionate about and what's something that you can actually get paid for and try to bridge that gap. And, you know, on the beginning, you're going to do more things kind of for money, but eventually you should be doing more of the thing that you love and the passion should be kind of merging so that you can make income doing something that you enjoy actually. So I think this is the first step so that, you know, you can be doing favor to your audience, to your clients by being an expert and doing like, you know, really the best you can. And of course, for you, it's going to be really fun because you will be, um, you know, you'll be doing a job that you love and you can wake up every Monday morning and be happy about it. And, um, what else? Perhaps once you find out what do you love to do and like, what's your passion, then you should start doing it every day as we already mentioned. And um, it's really hard because we don't have time, right? Especially for people who struggle with finance or who struggle from uh, where they are from or no uh, education. It can happen that you might have only 10, 15 minutes a day left and you're like really exhausted. But I would encourage everyone to like, instead of putting on a TV, because that's the easiest when we are tired, you know, just to, you know, do something that's easy for our mind. Instead of that, like start a habit, something that you can do every day, something that is fun to do and something that will bring you closer to your passion and what you want to do. And if you can do this for at least 100 days, you're going to build a habit and it will be like, when I started to draw, I was drawing, I think almost a year every day. And it became such a habit for me that I do it until today. So, um, once you know what's your expertise and uh, what do you love to do, like do it every day and start from five, 10 minutes a day until you're able to give more time to it or it becomes your job actually. And as you do this, you should always, always like show your work, show your progress because you never know somebody like who's just one step behind you could learn from your journey and like kind of you could teach them and that's important because until you are able to teach what you learned, um, that's the only validation of you like completely, you know, grasping the concept, if that makes sense. So you should learn uh, and teach, learn and teach, learn and teach to whoever, even if it's your younger sister, brother, or just another designer who just graduated or who's just stepped behind you. Try to transfer your knowledge, even if it seems like not important, you always are a step ahead of somebody who's behind you. So that's really helping out in learning. Um, then definitely learn about the business side. I'm really grateful for this kind of experience of my life because um, it gave me a head start to know 
how to monetize my work, how to com- connect it with the commercial world, but uh, at the same time, how to write contracts, how to price your work and do all the business around it. So that's like additional skill, I would say. And to do that, you can watch the future. You can, um, you can read some books. And again, it depends on the skills that you are missing or feel like you are missing. There are books, very good books uh, about negotiation techniques. There are very good books about marketing. Um, and then depending on your expertise, you would read anything related to mindset. Depends what you are missing. So I cannot really, I'm not sure what books or um, software I could recommend here. Depends, I guess, on the case, but definitely have a growth mindset and like keep learning. So if you want to give me an example, I can be even more specific. Like um, in illustration, the area you're focusing on. Um, when it comes to illustration for the books, I'm not really a big fan of the books that are, um, you know, full of pictures because I wasn't able to learn much from them. But uh, you could get, for example, uh, product design books, which help you to understand. Um, there is a book called, I think, Hooked. And it's about the product design and how to connect with the audience and how to hook, or yes, I think it's like that. It's how to build products that are forming a habit for the audience to come back to you again and again. Um, And in general, um, you need to specialize in something and read on that topic because it's very personal. When I say I specialize in mental mental health, that means I read a lot of books on that topic. So it depends what you are reading, uh, what you are, sorry, what's your expertise. Um, When it comes to mindset, definitely um, all the books on marketing, I would say. So, you know, it's hard for me to recommend illustration books. I think I don't have any, like, you know, visual book, how to draw. I have one book on art therapy that I love using for my audience to show them exercises to like, you know, draw and practice and also connect with yourself so that you can grow uh, because I'm really interested in personal growth. But if you are interested, I don't know, in drawing dogs, then perhaps your job will be to study everything about the dogs, get some books about dog shelters, about the pet shops and how can you draw for them. So. I think it's very, very specific. Uh, I do not have any book on principles of illustrations, perhaps Skillshare courses. Yeah, sure. I mean, anything, books, courses, but I mean, they're all learning resources as long as um, if anyone who's interested in the subject would follow follow them. I mean, yeah, they're just different medias, but they're, yeah. they're kind of the same. Um, so. Uh, that's about it. And uh, thank you, thank you for coming on to the podcast. And uh, where can people reach out to you? Yes, I Anna? guess the best is on the Instagram. It's Varo Joanna with double R and double N. So I hope you can <laughs> type it out. Yeah, don't worry. I'm I'm going to tag the profile on every post. Um, so it's going to be pretty easy. That's cool. Uh, yeah, and so there's that. Have a good day, ladies and gentlemen, and. Bye till next episode. Bye.